Okay, so here's what we've established so far. This is what we know just by looking at the graph. Now let's play with this. I can't work off, work out dy on dx off the bat just looking at that thing because y is no longer the subject of this equation, okay? But that's okay. X and y, they're just letters, right? I call them x and y at the moment, but I could have just as easily have called them, I don't know, u and whatever you like over here. Call it v, for instance, right? These are just pronym rules. We can just make them anything we like, right? So as a consequence of them just being pronumerals that can mean, that'll do, <laughs> that can just mean anything, I can treat them somewhat interchangeably when it comes to calculus. So instead of doing dy on dx, because y is usually the thing I'm focusing on over here, and x is usually the thing I'm focusing over here, everything is backwards, yeah? So this next fraction I'm going to write to try and differentiate this thing will not be dy on dx, it's going to be the x and dy. Just pause for a minute and think about what we've done here, right? We are integrating x, sorry, differentiating x with respect to y. This is the, the new variable we're thinking about. And you know what this derivative is. You did it a while ago, right? Does anyone remember what the derivative of 10 is? Sec squared. Now we're so used to just writing x after this, but our function is in terms of y, right? So I'm going to write this. Okay. This is good, sort of. I've made some progress, right? But I've hit a new problem, right? Number one, um, I usually, when I have, I'm trying to go for something with respect to x, right? I want my answer to be with respect to x as well. So number one, I'm in y land, not x land. That's the first problem. The second problem is, uh, this is all in terms of sec, which is weird and gross, right? I've got everything's in terms of tans over there. So these two problems of y's instead of x's and sec instead of tan, I can solve these in one hit. There's an identity. You learned it last year that will help you get from here back over into a more familiar territory. Can anyone help me with this one? Okay, now, I heard some 1 plus, some 1 minus. If you're like me, I never remembered the identity that we're going to use here, okay? If you do remember it, good for you, right? But if you're like, I think I remember it, but I'm not sure, right? Well, that means you're just as likely to use it the wrong way than the right way. So I'm going to give you a much easier way to remember it. The tan squareds, sec squared, all that kind of thing, it all comes back down to this fundamental identity. Do you remember this one? What's it equal to? What do we call this, by the way? This identity has a name. It's called the, starts with a P. It's the Pythagorean identity because in this particular triangle on the unit circle, right, this is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. There actually really should be a squared there, right? Because this is the radius. This is the hypotenuse, right? This, we can get sec squared out of this by doing what to everything? What am I going to do? Yeah, go ahead. Divide by cos squared. Let's do it. Okay. So at this point, and I literally did this every time I was trying to remember, I'm like, I know one of them's plus, one of them's minus. How do I get this? Well, you're going to get tan squared here. What are you going to get here? One. one. You're going to get sec squared. squared. That's the thing I want. So let me just say that one more time, right? Tan squared plus one equals sec squared. That was right to begin with. So this is one plus tan squared. Okay, so I've solved half my problems, right? I've gone out of sec land and back into tan land. This is useful because, come back over here to the second line we wrote. I'm going to make it a bit clearer again because I used green. x equals tan y. So what could I write in place of this on the next line? Instead of tan squared y, I could write x squared, because that's just tan y, all squared. So 1 plus x squared. Do you see how I've made that substitution? Okay. Now, all this time, I've been working out dx on dy, but that's not really the thing I want, is it, right? I really want dy on dx. So this is amazing, right? This is just a fraction, so what can I do with it? I can just take the reciprocal. Now, it is super important that I mention that actually what I just said is not technically correct. 
dy on dx and dx on dy, they're not just a fraction. There's actually all of this weird limits and infinitesimals and things that are like, is that zero? I don't know, we're kind of like zero. It's getting closer and closer to zero, but not quite. There's actually a huge amount of mathematical machinery happening behind here. So what I just said, it's like a fraction, is not technically true. However, in the scope of this course, it is close enough to a fraction that we can kind of treat it in this context as if it is. So guess what? You're done. That's it. That's the derivative we were after for tan inverse. So let's go right back to the start. Here's our answer over here. And there are two things we need to do to think about this, right, before we move on to sine inverse and cos inverse. The first thing we should do is look at that and say, really? <laughs> Does this not strike you as totally bizarre? You've been doing calculus with trig functions for a long time, and that kind of felt like its own hermetically sealed universe, right? You differentiate uh, regular old sine and you get cos. You differentiate cos, you get back to sine, negative sine, right? We've already talked about tan going into sec squared, so it felt like you differentiate, you integrate, you stay in trigonometry land, right? But suddenly, in inverse trigonometry land, there's this weird link between these that, at least for me, I don't know if, for you, if any of you were like, this is exactly what I expected. I didn't. The fact that algebra and trigonometry would have this kind of link, like it all just kind of folded out, right? If for you, you're like, I'm feeling pretty like that's sensible, okay? What I want to just say to you is, this is as wild, this is as ridiculous as saying, if I had a, um, you guys have done series, haven't you? You've done infinite series, yeah? Um, arithmetic progressions, geometric progressions, all that kind of thing, right? Let me give you a series just real quick, right? One plus a quarter plus a ninth, what would you guess is coming next? One sixteenth, what would you guess is coming next? One over 25. So what this is, is an infinite series made of the reciprocals of the squares, right? The reciprocals of the squares, okay? Do me a favor, get your calculator out, okay? Just go ahead, put in at least the first five. I'll let you decide if you want to do a few more, okay? And then I want an answer from this. Like, give me some number of decimal places, okay? Maybe you and the person next to you, obviously the bigger you go, the longer you go, the more your decimal places are going to adjust, especially as you get to small ones down the end. Go ahead and put them in. Now, um, who's just put in the first five? Does anyone just put in the first five? I just want to know. Yeah? What did you get? 1.46361. OK, I think that was, Did anyone go for more than five? Who did? Yeah. Did you, how many did you get? What did you get? 1.5409. 1.5. Sorry. Yeah, OK. Uh, sorry. I'm going to put an arrow here. 1.58, did you say? 4, 9, 8, and so on. Okay. Did anyone go more than that? You want to do a seventh one? I'm going to tell you, you end up to, I did this earlier because I was not trusting my own ability to put it in the calculator, right? You get to these, and the more you put on, like these fractions down here, they get really, really tiny, so they don't end up changing these front numbers, right? Now, this looks pretty rubbish and random, doesn't it? Like, what kind of number is that? I don't know what that is. You're pretty good at recognizing, like, say, root 3 on 2 or 1 on root 2 because you use that a lot. What if I told you that the number you got to was this. You'd be like, that sounds ridiculous. Where, where are the circles in this thing? Pi is a circle number, right? Where did that come from? Now, that where did that come from experience is what you should be thinking when you look at this, right? Why should that get to that? I mean, the why is there, there's your answer. But the fact that it does should rattle you just a little bit.